Hey everyone, and welcome to What Did I Miss? Where today I'll be breaking down the second episode of the final season of Star Trek Picard, titled Disengage. The episode begins with a flashback to an event that occurred two weeks before the beginning of the season. The first line of dialogue from Jack Crusher may actually be a huge hint as to what is really going on with his character, as he states that the USS Elios is a Mariposa medical starship. Crusher on Mariposa medical vessel designation Elios 12 on approach to Sanya Prime. Mariposa is a planet that was first mentioned in the Next Generation episode titled Up the Long Ladder. In that episode, the crew of the USS Enterprise-D come upon two separate colonies of humans that look exactly alike. It turns out that they are all clones created by the five surviving members of a ship named the SS Mariposa. If Doctor and Jack Crusher are working with members of this planet, it could point to their research being based around cloning technology, something that was also a big plot point of the final Next Generation era film, Star Trek Nemesis, where Picard learned that Romulans had stolen his DNA to create a clone of himself. This episode also begins in a similar fashion to the first episode of the season, with the SS Elios in trouble, but this time, it is Jack Crusher, not Beverly Crusher, that handles the issue and is able to save the ship. The ship is approaching a planet named Sarnia Prime. This could be a reference to James Duhan, as he was raised in Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. The Elios is unable to make contact with the planet, and is then quickly come upon by two ships from the Fenris Rangers. Seven ended up joining this organization of space vigilantes after she was unable to join Starfleet when the Voyager returned to Earth something we learn about during the course of the first and second seasons of Picard. We also heard Jack Crusher discuss this event during his meeting with Picard and Riker in the first episode. They found us on Sarnia. We ran, then Kaffa, then Exoport. After the Fenris Rangers find his stash of Romulan ale, Jack mentions the medical properties of the highly addictive and illegal drink, which may be a callback to how Dr. McCoy described how he used the beverage in the film The Wrath of Khan. Romulan ale? Why? Well, you know, this is illegal. I only use it for medicinal purposes. Back in the present, Jack tells Picard and Riker that they have been running from different people for weeks, including three men in Starfleet uniforms that reference the Prime Directive. This may also be a hint as to what the Crushers are up to on the SS Elios. The Prime Directive is the guiding principle of Starfleet and prohibits them from interfering in the development or evolution of another species. The Prime Directive may be the reason that Dr. Crusher left Starfleet, as it is often a point of consternation between medical professionals in the Star Trek universe who are also bound to the Hippocratic Oath, that requires them to treat their patients to the best of their ability and is not technically bound by the regulations in Starfleet. The group start to devise a way to use the shuttle that Picard and Riker used to board the Helios as a means of escape. However, this plan is quickly doused as the shuttle is destroyed and in a blink and you will miss it moment, we can see a piece of rubble coming towards the camera that shows us that the name of the shuttle was the Savik. Savik was a character first introduced in the film The Wrath of Khan and was played by Kirstie Alley as well as Robin Curtis in future appearances. Before the third season of Picard was released, the showrunner released some background information on the USS Titan and its history, where we learn that Savik was the first captain of the Titan and that after she left her post, she was succeeded by William Riker. We then get a short intro for the episode, and as I mentioned in my breakdown of last week's episode, the title cards use a very similar font and color that the title cards used in The Next Generation and the film starting with Wrath of Khan. Rafi is still understandably upset after the attack shown in last week's episode and attempts to call her handler from Starfleet to meet up. She is aboard the La Serena, which is the version from the main universe given to her from Seven after she was given the ship from Rios. Just like in last week's episode, when Rafi and her handler speak, you can see a modified Starfleet Delta badge on the screen, which looks very similar to the one used by Section 31 during the second season of Discovery. Section 31 is a clandestine organization that works alongside Starfleet to further its interests and was first introduced during the series Deep Space Nine. When Rafi meets up with the Ferengi later in the episode, he is also suspicious of her involvement with Section 31. You smell like Starfleet. Federation. Section 31. While speaking with her handler, Rafi brings up the file on Sneed, and if you freeze the frame, you can see that he has four associates that should also be very well known to fans of Star Trek. The first is Morn of Luria, who was a background character on Deep Space Nine that never even said a word, but appeared in 93 episodes of the series, as well as one episode each of The Next Generation, Voyager, and Lower Decks. Next is Quark of Ferenginar, who is a main character on Deep Space Nine, as well as Brunt of Ferenginar, who is one of the many characters that Jeffrey Combs has played on various different Star Trek series. Then finally, there is Thaddean Okona, a space pirate first introduced in the Next Generation episode, The Outrageous Okona, who also appeared during the first season of Star Trek Prodigy and an episode of Lower Decks. 
Just as it looks like the Elios is done for, the Titan comes to the rescue and gets in between the two ships. This is very similar to how the USS Enterprise E saved the Defiant, Worf, and Ben Wyatt during the battle with the Borg in the film First Contact. Next we find Rafi back on the planet Metallus Prime. In my video last week, I stated that this planet was first mentioned on the series Enterprise in the episode Dawn. The planet was named after then production assistant Terry Metallus, who is now the showrunner of Star Trek Picard. Rafi is there to meet with Jay, her ex-husband. His character was introduced in the novel Second Self, which takes place between the first and second seasons of Star Trek Picard. He mentions that their son Gabe told him that Rafi ambushed him at the Doctor, a scene depicted in the first season Picard episode, Stardust City Rag. Then we get the introduction of Amanda Plummer as this season's supposed big bad, Captain Vadic. Not only is Miss Plummer a very accomplished actress, probably best known for her role in the film Pulp Fiction, but she is also a legacy casting, as her father Christopher Plummer played the Klingon General Chang in the film Star Trek The Undiscovered Country. I believe that she is channeling her father's performance within this character along with her own nuance, and I am definitely excited to see her this season. She seems to know a lot about everyone on the ship, such as Captain Shaw's psychological profile, and that Picard is now a synthetic being. This leads me to believe that Vadic may also have a connection with Starfleet Intelligence and Section 31. After she tosses the Elios at the Titan, Ensign Sidney LaForge explains to Captain Shaw how this was possible. Sidney is one of the two daughters that Geordi LaForge has, and she is actually following in her father's footsteps as the helmsman of the Titan, since before Geordi became the chief engineer of the Enterprise, he was the helmsman of the ship in the first season. As Picard and Riker try to figure out why Jack is so important to Vadic, Captain Shaw interrupts them and escorts him to the brig. Before Captain Shaw does this, he reads many of Jack Crusher's aliases, including James Cole. James Cole is a character from the sci-fi film and series 12 Monkeys, where in the film he was played by Bruce Willis, and in the series he's played by Aaron Stanford. One of these actors will actually make an appearance in this episode of Picard. The 12 Monkeys series was created by the aforementioned former production assistant on Star Trek Enterprise, Terry Metallus. While in the brig, Picard reads off various charges against Jack and his many aliases. The first mentions the planet Andoria, one of the founding members of the Federation. Picard also mentions the planet Binar 3, and the Binars are a race of coupled, cybernetically enhanced aliens that were introduced in the Next Generation episode 11001001. There is also mention of a murder on Andreas 5. This may be me stretching, but this could be a reference to actor Andreas Katsoulas, who besides playing the character Tomalak on The Next Generation, is better known for his role as Jakar on Babylon 5. On Metallus Prime, Rafi meets with Sneed who is a Ferengi. This alien race was originally conceived to be the main villains of the next generation, but because of the poor reception that they received, they were relegated mostly to comic relief until Armin Sherman's performance as Quark on DS9 resurrected them. Sneed is wearing a fur coat, which looks a lot like the pelts that the Ferengi wore in their first appearance during the next generation episode The Last Outpost. Along with the fur coat, Sneed also has tattoos on his head, which were found on the Ferengi shown during the next generation, but this was mostly dropped for their future appearances on Deep Space Nine and other series. Sneed is played by actor Aaron Stanford, who as I mentioned was one of the stars of the series 12 Monkeys, which Picard showrunner Terry Metallus created. Sneed has Rafi use a drug named Splinter to prove her story. Splinter is another callback to 12 Monkeys, as besides being the name of the first episode of the series, it is also the name of the technology used to travel through time. Rafi is saved by none other than Worf, who it turns out was her handler with Starfleet Intelligence. When he reveals himself, you can hear the Klingon theme written by Jerry Goldsmith that was first heard in the original Star Trek motion picture. Back on the Titan, Jack is able to escape from the worst brig ever and attempts to give himself up trying to save the crew. One of the most infamous lines from the film The Wrath of Khan is that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. And even though Jack is not a part of Starfleet, he seems to understand this. This could also be the reason why Captain Shaw does not want to sacrifice a crew of 500 for one person. After Gates McFadden and Patrick Stewart bring the house down by just sharing a look, Picard finally pulls rank as Admiral and gets the ship ready for a fight. He concedes that Jack Crusher is his son and takes the ship into the nebula. Now, this has a lot of connections to the Wrath of Khan. Not only because James Kirk also found out that he had a son in that movie named David Marcus, but Kirk also tried to evade Khan by entering a nebula, much like how Picard takes the Titan into a nebula to try to evade the Shrike. This is just my breakdown of the episode, so if you'd like to hear my review of it, don't forget to check back on Monday for my weekly podcast, WDIM News. 
Well, that was everything I saw, but let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Thank you very much for joining me. Please don't forget to hit that like button to help support my videos, and I'll see you next time on What Did I Miss?